Welcome to American Medicine Today, presented by the Bonatti Spine Institute, featuring the internationally acclaimed inventor of the Bonatti Spine Procedures, Alfred Bonatti, MD. Now here along with Dr. Bonatti, your host, Kimberly Brumell. Thanks for joining us for American Medicine Today. I'm Kimberly Brumell, joined by our radio executive producer and friend, Ethan Euchre. I am here, as always. And our <laughs> other friend and senior fellow, <laughs> Jeff Wagstaff. Very distinguished gentleman. Yes. Thank Part you of- for having me here at the Broadcasting Playground at iHeartMedia. <laughs> and across from me, we have world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Alfred Benatti of the Benatti Spine Institute. Thanks for joining us. And he doesn't have his mic on, but he is very here undistinguished. And, uh, oh, uh, no. <laughs> oh, stop. That's but, hard you know, every week we try to say what sets Dr. Benatti and the Benatti Spine Institute apart from other things on the market. And week after week, we talk to patients that were told they could undergo invasive procedures and they would lose a ton of mobility. They basically be exchanging the pain they're currently in for other pains, or they're told they have to be uh, filleted in front, in the back, all these other things. You don't have to suffer. There's something on the market called the Benatti Spine Procedures, and they were developed by Dr. Benatti after years of putting up with failed open back surgeries. He hated it. He hated seeing patients that weren't truly resolved of their pain. So he broke away from the mold and he actually got out of back surgery for a while because he was uh, that bothered by the results. And he started um, arthroscopy on the knees, on all the joints of the body. And one day, boom, all of a sudden he was like, I know what it is. I know how to access it. And that's how the Bonatti Spine Procedures came to be. Uh, With that said, Bonatti succeeds where others fail because the folks there, they're MDs and they're able to get to the root of somebody's problem. We have an exciting show today. We have Dr. Bill Andrews and he'll be on later to talk about Tello, uh, mirrors. Telomerase. And tele- yeah. Mirrors. And- it's basically a fancy way of saying he has essentially found mm-hmm. sort of a cure for, for aging. Yes, <laughs> right. he can turn back the biological clock, which is great. Then we have Carolyn Brent. She's going to be our in studio guest and talking about uh, the caregiver's companion. And then, of course, we'll hear what's new in American medicine today. But up first. In today's Back to Life segment, we will talk to a patient of the Bonatti Spine Institute who went from living a life that was restricted by pain and discomfort through their journey of finding the Bonatti Spine Institute and are now living pain-free. Well, Janice, I would like to welcome you to the show. Janice Spiro of Vero Beach, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. So, uh, Janice, um, what was the onset of your pain? Was it something degenerative in nature? Were you in an accident? Can you kind of walk us through that process and, you know, let us know the types of treatments or surgeries that you had previous um, to finding the Bonatti Spine Institute? Well, I had um, I had actually started losing some weight and mm-hmm. I had lost um, almost 50 pounds and was working out and started um, having some back pain okay. with that and going to the gym. Mm-hmm. So I went to... Um, a physician and um, they had recommended that I go get actually went and saw a neuro um, doctor okay physician I guess who recommended that I go and get one of the um, shots in my back all right for the pain in my back that I was having mm-hmm. and um, I went and had that and um, I had no relief from that one whatsoever okay and Let I me- guess like some I guess some people normally get relief from that, and I had no relief from that whatsoever. Let me ask you something, though. The pain that made you seek out these shots, what type of pain was it? How was it affecting your life? What were some of the things you were unable to do when you were in that amount of pain? Well, it was in my lower back, mostly on the right-hand side, and um, it was pretty much affecting my daily living. That got to the point where I couldn't go to the gym anymore. Um, I couldn't bend. It was really difficult for me to get out of a car. Um, it was it was just affecting most of my daily living. Got it. All right. So so you went, you got the shots, and they weren't really working for you. No, they weren't working at all. Okay. It was having no effect on the pain that I was having in my back. What did the physician say when he said, "Oh, these shots will help you," and then they didn't give you any pain relief? What was their response? Well, then basically, I went back to the neuro the neurosurgeon. I went back mm-hmm. to him, and he said, "Well." This is right around Christmas time, right before Christmas. He said, well, basically the next phase that we can do at this point is to have you have surgery on your back. And what that would involve is, would be putting um, a couple pins in your back 
Oh. And you know, you'd be out of work basically for about six to eight weeks. Holy cow. Yeah. And I'm sure you weren't happy with that diagnosis. Well, I didn't think that was, I, you know, I didn't really see that I had any other choice at that point because I was in so much pain. Right. And I, you know, I wanted to kind of get back to the gym. I wanted to go work out. So, you know, that's, the, going, that's a really go good point that we should make, Janice, is that a lot of people, they get that first diagnosis. And, and I'm, I'm the same sort of guy that I don't want to go to a bunch of different people. I want you to tell no. me what's wrong with me and tell me what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. But it's really not a good method. You know, you need to get second, third, sometimes fourth and fifth mm -hmm. opinions um, and not be satisfied with that initial diagnosis. Mm -hmm. So where did you go from there, Janice? Well, I had some friends. I work for a school district, and I had some friends who had actually um, at one of my schools who had been to Benati. And so... I had spoken to them, and, and the doctor wasn't going to be able to do that surgery until the end of January. So I talked to my friends, and they're like, well, you should call the Benati Institute. And I mm -hmm. was like, okay, well, I didn't figure I had anything to lose because I had to wait till the end of January anyway. Mm -hmm. So I called the Benati Institute, and I spoke to someone there, and um, they asked me if I had recent MRIs, and I said, yes, I did. Mm -hmm. And they asked me where I had them done, and I told them. And... Um, so they, and I actually sent an email. By the time I sent the email, they called me right back uh, after they got the email. Mm -hmm. And then they asked me where I had the MRIs. I told them. And by the time I drove from where my office was to my next stop, they had already received the MRIs that quickly and had called me back. That's great. So I was, I was very impressed. You know, I have to just say, one of the things about the Venati Institute is I'm very impressed with, like, their for lack of a better word, like their customer service mm -hmm. and the way that they deal with things was like so professional. It was amazing. So when, when you came in and you went through the evaluation process, what was that like for you? Well, I came in and <clears throat> I talked to um, the nurse practitioner okay. and spoke with him. They did another set of x-rays. And I spoke to Dr. Uteg, and actually, initially, he didn't know that he if he was going to be able to do the surgery. Mm -hmm. so he was a little unsure about my x-ray, so he had me do another set of x-rays sure. to double-check to make sure he could even do the surgery on me, because mm -hmm. he didn't want to do the surgery if he didn't think it was going to help me. Right. So after the second set, then he realized that he could do the surgery. So I was kind of, I was really impressed by that because I was like he didn't want to really waste his time doing a surgery if he didn't think a surgery was going to actually help me. Mm -hmm. So it was like they're just so professional there. I can't I can't possibly explain it. It's just amazing. Once you had that uh, second imaging set of imaging done and he was able to look, did you feel as though he was understanding where the onset of pain truly came from? Yeah, yeah, he he. He clearly understood, and okay. after I saw the physician's assistant, he said, mm -hmm. don't tell him where the pain is. He's going to, like, explain it to you from looking at the x-rays, mm -hmm. and he was able to explain it exactly to me. He was able to tell me where the pain was mm -hmm. instead of me telling him, and so that was pretty amazing, and, and from, the, um, from the MRIs, he was able to, like, clearly explain to me what was going on with my back, which was what was great. <laughs> And so what did he tell you, um, what was the procedure, the diagnosis. yeah, what did he tell you was wrong with you, and what were the options as far as surgery goes? Basically what he explained is, it's kind of like, it's kind of hard to explain, but basically like where the nerves kind of come out from your back, like the area is all closed up, and so mm -hmm. it's like tension on all the nerves. Mm -hmm. And so kind of what they do is they go in there and they like open that area back up so that it's not pinching on your nerves anymore. Okay. When you talk about... So uh, sorry, when you talk about the pain that you were in, the pinching of the nerves, was that a localized pain? Was it a shooting, radiating pain? Can you kind of describe that for people that may be suffering like you? Or it's have been suffering? Like a, it's almost like a pain of like someone like slamming your back with a constant hammer. That's what it was oh. for me. Oh, that sounds and pleasant. That, Good times. Got, Huh? <laughs> Sounds like Ouch. a great time. Jeez. Oh. Yeah, it's awesome. And then as it got worse over time, it got to the point where um, I couldn't walk a long distance because my leg, my right leg would go numb, and it would feel like it was asleep, like when your leg falls asleep. Mm -hmm. And then it would also feel very heavy, um, like it was muscle fatigue. So okay. I couldn't walk a long distance anymore. Um and and that's how it felt. Wow, and it's this very, from someone very, very frustrating. 
I bet, especially considering you were used to going to the gym. Must have been yeah, extremely yeah, frustrating. Very, yeah, it's terrible. So um, in surgery, um, they have the conscious IV sedation. Um, do you remember interacting? Well, first off, did you watch your surgery? No, no, I didn't. I, well, I didn't watch. Um, they, I didn't watch the surgery. I okay. remember they woke me up mm-hmm. dur- during the surgery mm-hmm. to look. Mm-hmm. And I looked, actually, at okay. the camera, and I remember saying to Dr. Utek, I don't know how he knew what was going on, because <laughs> it's just like a mess on the screen. I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. Trust me, Janice, I've been in and seen some of these, and I'm a radio guy. I have no medical background, but I, I look up and I just think, what are they doing in there? That's crazy. Yeah, I don't know how they can tell what they're doing from what's on that screen. It's, a, it's just all a big mess to me. So. <laughs> Do you remember interacting with the doctor and the, and the staff? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he um, he you know wanted me to try to recreate the pain, mm-hmm. and so but it was really hard for me to recreate because a lot of the pain comes from extensive walking or will come from me bending over. So mm-hmm. I, I remember trying to recreate the pain, but I couldn't really recreate it. Okay. Uh, so I wasn't really able to do that. Okay. So fair enough. And how long, approximately? Well. When about did you start to feel pain relief of the pain that brought you to the Institute? To Benetti? Right after I got home, I live all the way on the East Coast, so Correct. of Florida. So um, the next day I was up walking, and you know, I felt much better. I, I, I had very little surgical pain. Okay. Uh, they give you, you can opt to have a... Uh, shot the next day when you come back for mm-hmm. your follow-up. Yes. I can't remember what the shot is. I think it's like an epidural. And so I got that shot. And so I had no surgical pain basically whatsoever wow. after getting that, that epidural shot. So I went home the next day, and then when I got up and started walking, I had I basically had no pain whatsoever. That's fantastic. fantastic. And if you um, saw somebody that was struggling in the way you did with uh, neck or back pain, would you feel confident in your results to recommend Bonatti to oh, somebody else? Oh yeah, absolutely. Else? I've, I've recommended some people mm-hmm. already that they go over. <clears throat> excuse me, that they go over there. Oh. I just I just went back to the gym on Tuesday. Okay. And it's the first time I've gone back, and one of the ladies who's at the gym, her boyfriend is having problems with his disc mm. and his back. And so I automatically, I'm like, oh, you need to go to this place over on the West Coast that I went to for my back surgery. Mm-hmm. And so she wrote down the name and everything of where I had gone to. Oh. Well, thank you, Janice. You have a very compelling story. I'm glad you're doing much better, and you realize that there was somebody out there that could help you. Yeah, I was I'm very happy with, you know, the results, and I feel much better, and yeah, it's, it's great to be able to bend over, and it's got inter- I had to learn how to bend differently with my knees, not just bend over with my back, so yes. that helped too, but Good yeah, technique. it's great, I feel, feel much better. And congratulations on the great effort at the gym. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I feel, feel <laughs> a lot better getting back into it again, so right. yeah, it feels good. All right, Fantastic. Janice. Fantastic, well, thank thanks you. For, thanks for joining us and continued uh, pain-free living. Mm-hmm. Yep, I will. Thank you so much. All right. Keep in touch. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yep, have- Oh, oh, oh. Ah. <laughs> sorry, Janice. Janice. Sorry, Janice. Um, again, Janice Spiro of Vero Beach, Florida, letting people know that she suffered um, with lower lumbar pain and she found real results mm-hmm. at the Bonatti Spine Institute. So if you or someone you know is suffering just like she did, reach out to the Bonatti Spine Institute at Bonatti.com or at 855-267-0483. Well, we have Dr. Bill Andrews, founder, founder of Sierra Sciences. And he's going to talk about a cure for aging. Reversing the clock, the mm-hmm. biological clock. Mm-hmm. Stay tuned. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Bonatti created, perfected, and patented the Bonatti spine procedures. Using his genius, Bonatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Bonatti spine procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Bonatti succeeds where others fail. This is the first time that I am pain free after 18 years and it's just wonderful. I love it. Phenomenal results. No pain whatsoever. My pain is virtually gone. Nothing short of a miracle. 
Those surgeries gave me my life back. Already, I feel like a new person. I'm going home new. I can chase my grandbaby now. I can garden, I can cook, and uh, I'm really thrilled. The outcome's been remarkable. I feel 100% better. It's like a miracle. It was phenomenal. It literally did change my life. I was in a wheelchair at that time, and uh, I left here walking. Every single pain that I had when I came here is gone. I'm ready to go home and feel great. This place is great. Thank you. Everything that they said they would do, they have done, and I'm very, very satisfied and happy with those results. I knew in surgery, in fact, I told the surgeon when he relieved the pain off the nerve. The pain is gone. I'm feeling wonderful. I have no pain. I feel better than I felt in four years from the surgery. It was almost immediate relief. Today I am totally pain free, which is just amazing. It's fantastic. It definitely works. I mean, I really don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> I'm happy. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Benatti created, perfected, and patented the Benatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Benatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Benatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Benatti succeeds where others fail. You're listening to American Medicine Today, presented by the Bonatti Spine Institute, featuring the internationally acclaimed inventor of the Bonatti Spine Procedures, Alfred Bonatti, MD. Once again, here are Dr. Bonatti and your host, Kimberly Brumell. You're listening to American Medicine Today. I'm Kimberly Brumell, joined by our executive producer of the radio program, Ethan Euchre. Here as always. Happy to be here. And our friend and senior fellow, Jeff Wagstaff. Yes, I am. Thanks for having me. <laughs> and across from me, that gentleman over there is world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Alfred Bonatti. Hello. <laughs> and on the line, we have Dr. Bill Andrews, president and CEO of Sierra Sciences and author of Curing Aging. Apparently, he holds 35 patents for the production of telomerase. 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 Yes. I'm the only one that's unable <laughs> that's to say this. Um, a substance which turns mortal cells into immortal cells. So basically, you're turning back the biological clock. So welcome to the program, uh, Dr. Andrews. And I can't wait to hear more about this. Um, what are telomeres? Telomeres. And, oh, my Lord. Uh, t <laughs> Dr. Andrews, will you tell her how to say this? T say it again. Well, <laughs> first of all, uh, thank you for having me. And <laughs> Every pronunciation is correct. Thank Nobody's you. Nobody's ever said, here's the proper way to pronounce it, and everybody pronounces it differently. So I say telomerase for the enzyme, and I say telomere for the tips of your chromosome. So All right, and, 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 uh, and the whole thing's a very complicated thing. I know mm -hmm. I, I watched a few videos of yours on YouTube, and uh, it's very complicated, but can you break it down for the layperson in just a minute or two what these compounds are and what they do? Okay. Um, well, Telomeres are the very tips of your chromosomes. And if you think of a chromosome like a shoelace, the caps on your shoelaces are equivalent to the telomeres on your chromosomes. And just like when the caps on your shoelaces get short, your shoelaces start to fall apart, the same thing happens with your chromosome. When the telomeres get short on your chromosomes, your chromosomes start to fall apart, and this causes every disease you've ever heard of, including aging. And now it's been shown in mice that if we re-lengthen those telomeres, mm -hmm. such as essentially re-lengthening the caps on your shoelaces, it actually reverses all the effects. And mice actually became younger. And so this is real. This is real science published in scientifically peer-reviewed journals. Mm -hmm. There's uh, hundreds and hundreds of papers supporting the fact that this is real. And we are the only company, only research lab or any place anywhere in the world that's actually come up with ways to actually re-lengthen the telomeres in human cells. Wow. And uh, we already have a skin cream on the market. There are supplements on the market. Uh, these are kind of weaker versions of what we want to get in the future, where mm -hmm. we think by mid-2016, we're going to be able to have uh, supplements, uh, probably pharmaceutical-type drugs and natural products that are potent enough to actually cause the telomeres to get lengthened to the point of where 
people will actually start feeling and looking younger. And now, I'm really excited. I think that's going to happen by mid-2016. From your six, mouth to God's ears. 16 or 15? <laughs> this year or next year? 16. So 16. one six. Wow. The, the TA-65 is already on the market, am I right? TA-65 is on the market. Product B, Isogenesis, is on the market. Uh, um one the TA, the, the TA, the TA sixty five is is cream or is a pill? TA sixty five is both a pill and a cream. They have a cream. Uh, it's also sh sold by other companies that mm -hmm. they don't actually say the name of the actual ingredient. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> product B is a pill. So far, product B it's also called Isogenesis. Mm -hmm. And then there's those are all natural products. And then there's synthetic chemicals now that are put into skin creams that are a lot, lot more potent, mm -hmm. uh, and they're, they're being sold right now in Australia, New Zealand, South Korea, Japan, China, uh, places like that. And this is a uh, skin cream uh, that's actually had clinical studies done and showing uh, pretty dramatic results. Um, <laughs> Now, doc, Dr. Andrews, there's a lot of a lot of science behind this. Mm -hmm. You know, people listening are probably thinking, "Oh, he's selling some natural cream." Um, what I yeah. en what I enjoy is the science behind it and the mm -hmm. fact that you know you're saying that there's mortal cells in the body, which are pretty much every cell that we have. Right. There's also immortal cells, which uh, their telomerase or their their telomeres aren't shortened after cells divide. Those are um, located in the reproductive. Um, organs and things like that. So um, the telorom the t <laughs> telomerase, <laughs> darn words, the telomerase um, keeps those uh, from degenerating like that. Now, what I want to know is how far are we from actually having? You know, you've, like you said, you got the creams mm -hmm. out and things like that. How far are we all from living to a hundred, two hundred, three hundred years? No, but before because before, of this? before that, let me let me ask: How you introduce the the telomerase in the in the cell? What type of a, what type of a, um, mechanism you use to lengthen the the tel telomeres? Well, it's it's mostly small molecules and natural products which you just take as a pill, and they get inside the cell. Uh, we don't know how uh, they get inside. Well, the synthetic chemicals, they, are, they follow the uh, drug-like molecules of Lipinski's rule of five. So they, they do get inside the cells and turn on the gene for telomerase. So it, it essentially teaches your cells to produce its own telomerase. And then uh, the cells become, uh, become practically non-mortal. Not yet. I mean, it's... it's it's like a tug of war, you know. Mm -hmm. You you can put people on the side of re-lengthen telomeres, but it, in, in the early stages, it's still going to the shortening team is still going to win out. And so, so we're trying to build stronger and stronger and stronger ones. Mm -hmm. Now we do have one other approach, and that's using gene therapy. Uh, when I say we, I mean the scientific community. Uh, Sierra Sciences doesn't even actually have that, but there are gene ther therapy approaches uh, under development by various labs to uh, actually provide enough telomeres. And this has already been shown to work in human cells in a Petri dish and, and mm -hmm. in uh, uh, mice that you infect with a virus that carries the telomerase gene in, and it's so potent that it actually does reverse aging and make things younger, et cetera, and, and healthier. Is, is this something that when it's introduced, it needs to be continuous? Uh, you know, no. Uh, it depends on the really weak things, like the things, uh, and I, I, I didn't mean to say really weak, but because nothing's really weak, but the, right. the semi, the, the weaker things that exist now, yeah, you do want to use those continuously because they're really not, the net result isn't to lengthen the telomeres, it's actually just decreasing the rate of their shortening. Okay. But this virus approach that I just mentioned, uh, using gene therapy, this will actually lengthen the telomeres. And so uh, think of it this way. <clears throat> if you are an 80-year-old, Mm -hmm. person and you get infected with this virus, the telomeres will lengthen to the point where you're suddenly a 20-year-old again. Wow. Well, 60 years later, you're going to be 80 again unless you continue the treatment. So, mm -hmm. so it's, it's only if you stop the treatment, you just start aging at the normal rate. Uh -huh. How far are we away from that being on the market, do you think? I think it's going to be on the market this year. Unbelievable. Wow. What, what the, are you talking about the gene therapy? The gene therapy. I don't think it's going to be available in the United States, but I'm I'm aware of several different groups that in other countries that are making this available. They're setting up right now. They're 
they're getting ready to start treating people. And I'm, I'm, I would be, I'm 90% certain, just guessing, mm-hmm. that this has already been done. Okay, yeah. and people just aren't saying anything about it until they actually see that the results work for real. How about the cells? They don't become cancers. Uh, if you know, there's a lot of theories saying that producing telomerase in human cells will cause them to become cancer, but they're just theories. There's there's incredibly more theories that say that the lack of telomerase causes cancer. Okay. Uh, so it's it's one of these things we're going to find out. But right now, the theories that overwhelmingly are in stronger support saying that lack of telom- uh, telomerase causes cancer, short telomeres cause cancer, and keeping them long is going to decrease the risk of cancer and improve your body's ability to fight cancer. And I'm a big believer in that this is that it's not going to cause cancer. It's only going to decrease our risk of getting cancer and increase our abilities our body's ability to fight the cancer if we have cancer. Yeah, right. that, 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 that has common sense, yeah. All right, well, it's all fascinating stuff. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Dr. Bill Andrews, president and CEO of Sierra Sciences, and also he's the author of Curing Aging. Very interesting stuff. Mm-hmm. We appreciate you one, joining us. one comment? There's a movie called Da Immortalis. If people go to www.daimmortalis.com, they can see a documentary that's been filmed about our research. Excellent. All right. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, Dr. Andrews. Thank you. Have Take care. Amazing. Wow, amazing technology. Yeah. Well, um, coming up after the break, we have in studio Carolyn Brent, uh, caring for uh, your loved one uh, medically, financially, and emotionally, while also caring for yourself. So uh, we'll have more discussions and fun stuff continuing on American Medicine Today. Catch you after the break. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Bonatti created, perfected, and patented the Bonatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Bonatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Bonatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Bonatti succeeds where others fail. This is the first time that I am pain-free after 18 years, and it's just wonderful. I love it. Phenomenal results. No pain whatsoever. My pain is virtually gone. Nothing short of a miracle. Those surgeries gave me my life back. Already, I feel like a new person. I'm going home new. I can chase my grandbaby now. I can garden. I can cook, and uh, I'm really thrilled. The outcome has been remarkable. I feel 100% better. It's like a miracle. It was phenomenal. It literally did change my life. I was in a wheelchair at that time and uh, I left here walking. Every single pain that I had when I came here is gone. I'm ready to go home and feel great. This place is great. Thank you. Everything that they said they would do, they have done and I'm very, very satisfied and happy with those results. I knew in surgery, in fact, I told the surgeon when he relieved the pain off the nerve. The pain is gone. I am feeling wonderful. I have no pain. I feel better than I felt in four years from the surgery. It was almost immediate relief. Today I am totally pain free, which is just amazing. It's fantastic. It definitely works. I mean, I really don't know what else to tell you. (laughs) I'm happy. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Bonatti created, perfected, and patented the Bonatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Bonatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Bonatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Bonatti succeeds where others fail. 
You're listening to American Medicine Today, presented by the Bonatti Spine Institute, featuring the internationally acclaimed inventor of the Bonatti Spine Procedures, Alfred Bonatti, MD. Once again, here are Dr. Bonatti and your host, Kimberly Brumell. Thanks for listening to American Medicine Today. I'm Kimberly Brumell, joined by our radio executive producer, Ethan Euchre. Here as always. And world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Alfred Bonatti. Hello. And our in-studio guest, Carolyn Brent, a nationally acclaimed speaker, caregiver advocate and author of the caregiver's companion caring for your loved one medically financially and emotionally while caring for yourself and this is something that um, I find very interesting and I'm sure my mother will because she is sole caregiver to my nearly 90 year old grandmother Mm. and the one thing she has not done proper is take care of herself yes so um, why don't you go ahead and kind of elaborate on how we do this because you look amazing thank you well Every single day, there's over 79 million baby boomers between the age of 48 and 66 years old. Mm -hmm. We go to our jobs, we go and we go every place. We babysit, we Mm -hmm. travel, we have, we're MDs, MBAs, you name it. Mm -hmm. And one thing about it, we never ever think that we're going to have that sudden and unexpected telephone call that somebody in our family is going to need our help. That happened to me. I got that call, and guess what? I was in the pharmaceutical industry, working 17 years. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, I became my daddy's caregiver overnight. And how old was your father? My father was 75 years old, diagnosed with the early stages of dementia. Mm -hmm. And and keep in mind, I was on literally a clinical education manager. I worked my way up into pharmaceuticals Mm -hmm. on a flight going to San Francisco, and I got that phone call as soon as I got on the airplane. So what do you do? Right. Uh, well, and, and I guess yeah. back up for a second. Did you not notice any of these signs leading up to that where you thought, ah, dad's probably going to need some, some care coming up here? Or did it just actually, sort of happen? Actually, to me, it just sort of happened. Think about this. How often do we look at our parents? They're our superheroes. Mm-hmm. They're going to live forever. They're strong. They're not weak and, at all. N- and not weak <laughs> at all. So dad, he was doing things like losing his keys, this, yeah. things that all of us do. Okay. But one time, I actually flew to Colorado to visit my father, and I noticed his house was a disarray. Got his it. refrigerator had spoiled food in it, mm-hmm. and I thought, something's wrong with dad. Mm-hmm. Right. So the doctor uh, in, in uh, Colorado said, thank God you are your father's caregiver. And back then I thought, this was in 97, caregiver, me? Oh no, I'm my daddy's daughter. I am not a caregiver. <laughs> Caregivers work in hospitals. Right. So that's what I thought, but guess what? We are all caregivers. We're Mm -hmm. caring for either someone or we're caring for ourselves. So Mm -hmm. I don't care if you're young or old. I have a radio show and I had a 12 year old caregiver on my show. And I said, why, why do you say that you're a caregiver? She said, well, my grandmother has cancer Mm -hmm. and I read to my grandmother. My job is to read. So we make caregiving a family affair. So she said, I Mm -hmm. am a caregiver. And I went, whoa. (laughs) Yes, you Mm -hmm. were. Yeah. So how did you react to the call from the doctor Mm -hmm. saying that now you're, I mean, what what was the decision to become the caregiver of your father being a busy uh, woman and whatnot Mm -hmm. with a career and this and that? Why did you decide to care for your father versus sticking him in a home? Well, first of all, my father is my hero. I love him with all of my heart. He's deceased. But when uh, I had a talk with my father when I was 18 years old, he was a pastor, and he said, Carolyn, one of these days, I'm not going to be here on the face of the earth with you. And he was pointing to a pelican, uh, you know, in California, flying back and forth. He said, once that pelican had one job to do, Mm -hmm. pick up one grain of sand, fly all the way to the moon, and drop it off until there's no more sand on the face of the earth, he said, that's how long my love will be with you. Mm -hmm. When I'm gone, and... 18 years old. I didn't want to talk about death and dying. Are you crazy, right. Daddy? I don't want to talk about it. Right. So I remembered that promise I had w- uh, with my father when I was 18 years old, and I honored that promise to my my dad as far as taking care of him. And I never ever thought to put my dad in a nursing home. A matter of fact, I paid out of pocket uh, a six up to a sum of six thousand five hundred dollars a month for private assistant care. I worked with a broken foot. Messed up my back, <laughs> you know, doing that because I thought I, ca- I cannot afford to take off work. Mm-hmm. I've got to work to 
make this private assistant living. So now I'm an advocate. I tell people when you're young and you're healthy, get long term insurance, disability care, get it for your parents. You got to get it because the healthcare system is not kind to anyone. So that is why I wrote two books. This is my second book that I've written. And I just thank God I'm trying to get laws changed to not only help the caregiver, Mm -hmm. but also to protect that aging loved one. So that's why I tell folks, I'm 58. I'm proud. I work very, very hard to stay healthy because I don't want to be in anybody's home. I don't have kids. I don't. There's not a Carolyn to take care of me, right. so I got to take care of myself. Absolutely. <laughs> See, and this is something that you know. My parents had me mm-hmm. very young, and I'm in my mid 30s now. Right. So I mean, my parents are only in their mid 50s at right. this point. Yeah. So you know, I don't hopefully really have to worry about that for a while. But uh, my wife's parents, on the other hand, she's the baby of the family. Her father's 78. You know, mm-hmm. and and starting to get to where we've the wife and I have talked about Mm -hmm. this, you know, what are we going to do? You know, when do you take their keys away, not let them drive anymore? You know, Mm -hmm. and he's very independent, doesn't want to give anything up. You know, how do you recognize some of these signs and how do you Mm -hmm. go about sort of that intervention, I guess? Well, this is what I share with everyone, Ethan, that uh, first of all, we can't just look at death and dying and preparing for end of life for young folks. Anybody could walk out in the street, get hit by a bus, and guess what? You have, a, you have to have a medical directive, a health proxy, all these mm-hmm. things in place, because if, this, if that's not in place, the yes. hospital's going to look at you and say, well, who's, wh- who's the medical mm-hmm. uh, you know, professional directive? Who has that authority? So when it comes to parents, when it comes to kids, when it comes to anyone, we all need to prepare mm-hmm. for our own end of life. So, Ethan, this is how you deal with your family. You have to say, Mom, Dad, guess what? I have my medical directive that I've done for myself. Mm -hmm. I have uh, my living will that I've done for myself. I have my five wishes that if something happens to me, these are my five wishes. I don't want to be resuscitated. I want to, you know, I want to drink water or whatever your wishes are. Mm -hmm. So in order to deal with that resistant parent, Ethan, guess what? What? Get have your have all of your own medical records and your documentations in place. And mom and dad, so then it forces them to think about it. It's not going to force them. They're going to say, "I have a smart son, <laughs> Ethan. Can you help me, please?" Yeah. But that's what that's going to do. Now, with my family, totally unexpected. She's nearly ninety. Fell, total hip replacement. She had to undergo. Um, but how? You know, when it's the debate between do we put her in a facility, do we keep her home? Of course, everyone says keep her home. Right. But that's now my family or whoever's family would become the the care provider. Right. How how do you distinguish when it would be time to do the other or do you keep them at home? What are some of those factors that you really need to think about? Safety. That's Mm -hmm. the number one concern. If, the, if your 92-year-old grandmother is going to be safe living with your mom mm-hmm. and your mom has other caregivers helping her, mm-hmm. caregiving should be a family affair. It mm-hmm. should not be thrown on one person to do it all. One right. person cannot do that job. You have the medical, the legal, mm-hmm. the financial. There's so many components. I share with everyone, taking care of my dad was the easy part, but dealing with the insurance companies, mm-hmm. dealing with, you know, healthcare professionals, dealing with the state, dealing with the government, dealing with the VA. I dealt with all of them. I'm going, are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. It's easier to take care of a parent than to deal with the tricky waters of yes. what you go, go through mm-hmm. if you don't have insurance, mm-hmm. if you don't have any money, if you don't, if you don't, mm-hmm. if you don't. So to answer your question, caregiver, caregiving should be a family mm-hmm. affair. Everyone, including yourself, should get involved. There's Skype. There's, uh, you know, uh, 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 let me see, uh, just uh, Facebook. There's all different, Mm -hmm. all kind of stuff. Give your mother a break. Buy her a -hmm. certificate for a health spa Mm -hmm. for every single day. Mm -hmm. Let her go every day and and just be massaged Mm -hmm. and loved on. Because caregivers, we don't take care of ourselves. So that's why I have a special chapter about caregivers, how you take care of yourself, you got to delegate. Mm-hmm. You got to delegate and have everyone in the family to participate. If that's not an option, then a home may be the safer 
place. Right. I just did that with my mom. I took her to get her nails and a pedicure uh, (laughs) done just to give her a little bit of a break as much as we could fit into that time. Um, When it comes to if they do need to end up at a facility, how do you... um, how do you choose which one's the best? I mean, obviously, you can look at records and see if there's any yeah. uh, negative comments, anything like that, negative reviews. But in my book, The Caregiver Companion, I have a list of questions to ask. First of all, don't go by how beautiful the place looks, the chandeliers, the baby grand piano. Ask to see the kitchen. Ask to see any public areas that everyone gets together. Ask how many scabby, uh, you know, uh, close downs have they had? Because that's mm. pretty, pretty common in common places. Ask to go on the fifth floor. Guess what? It may smell like urine when you go on the fifth floor. The Got fifth flo- floor may be different than the first floor. Mm-hmm. And what can I say? A lot of these places don't like me, but I paid $6,500 a month for <laughs> private assistant living for my dad, and I would have to clean up his urine. So that's exactly. why I wrote the book. What is your money going for at that point? Mm-hmm. Well, it's uh, it's something that a lot of us, pretty much all of us at some point will have to Think make about. make a decision on, mm-hmm. so it's certainly good to start thinking about it early. Um, any parting thoughts as we wrap up? The parting thought is take care of yourself now. Today is the first day of your life. I don't care how old or how young you are. T- aging is beautiful. I thank God every day. I can't wait to turn 60. And uh, by the way, if you look at me on Amazon, I am in a, uh, a bikini. I show my body. <laughs> I show the six pack because you can take care of yourself. You don't have to be 22 years old to do it. Amen. All Thank right. you very much, You're Carolyn welcome. Brent, a nationally acclaimed speaker, caregiver advocate, and author of The Caregiver's Companion, Caring for Your Loved One Medically, Financially, and Emotionally While Caring for Thanks Yourself. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. you. Well, um, up next, we, we actually yes, have, uh, we, we asked Dr. Spiegel. No, right? we, no. no doc- oh, no, I'm sorry. Not Dr. Spiegel. Dr. That, Bill Andrews yes, is going to come back on. About and- turning back the biological clock. Mm-hmm fascinating stuff in fact it kind of fits right way. in it fits right in with what we're talking about it's almost right. staying fit and fine yeah. uh, stay tuned to american medicine today we'll be right back revolutionary in his field dr Bonatti created perfected and patented the Bonatti spine procedures using his genius Bonatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery scarring anesthesia and recovery So successful are the Bonatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Bonatti succeeds where others fail. This is the first time that I am pain free after 18 years. And it's just wonderful. I love it. Phenomenal results. No pain whatsoever. My pain is virtually gone. Nothing short of a miracle. Those surgeries gave me my life back. Already I feel like a new person. I'm going home new. I can chase my grandbaby now. I can garden. I can cook. And uh, I'm really thrilled. The outcome has been remarkable. I feel 100% better. It's like a miracle. It was phenomenal. It literally did change my life. I was in a wheelchair at that time and uh, I left here walking. Every single pain that I had when I came here is gone. I'm ready to go home and feel great. This place is great. Thank you. Everything that they said they would do, they have done and I'm very, very satisfied and happy with those results. I knew in surgery, in fact I told the surgeon when he relieved the pain off the nerve. The pain is gone. I'm feeling wonderful. I have no pain. I feel better than I felt in four years from the surgery. It was almost immediate relief. Today I am totally pain free, which is just amazing. It's fantastic. It definitely works. I mean, I really don't know what else to tell you. (laughs) I'm happy. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Bonatti created, perfected, and patented the Bonatti Spine Procedures. 
Using his genius, Bonatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Bonatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Bonatti succeeds where others fail. You're listening to American Medicine Today, presented by the Bonatti Spine Institute, featuring the internationally acclaimed inventor of the Bonatti Spine Procedures, Alfred Bonatti, MD. Once again, here are Dr. Bonatti and your host, Kimberly Brumell. Well, I'm Kimberly Brumell, and you are listening to American Medicine Today, joined by our executive radio producer, Ethan Euchre. I am here. Friend and senior fellow, Jeff Wagstaff. Present and accounted for. World-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Alfred Bonatti of the Bonatti Spine Institute. Here I am. And, well, it was so nice. We have him on twice. Uh, Dr. <laughs> Bill Andrews, president and CEO of Sierra Sciences and author of Curing Aging. Um, we had him on a couple segments ago. And um, just fascinating, fascinating information about how to turn back the biological clock. Yeah, and to recap for people, because this was a couple of segments ago yes. earlier in the hour, mm -hmm. um, there, it's very technical. Um, Dr. Bernardi wanted to actually get him back on mm -hmm. because we have so much more to talk about. Um, basically, it is reversing the biological clock through these things called telomeres and telomerase. Dr. Andrews, thanks for uh, sticking around for us, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Andrews, before we get started, is there any way that I can volunteer to be a human guinea pig, guinea pig or tester? Because I'm blown away by this technology. Well, yes, I can, I can put you in contact with people that I know that are doing this kind of stuff Ooh. in other countries. Right now, it's not feasible to do in the United States right. because of FDA regulation, mm -hmm. et cetera. There's... But I think some of these places outside the country are doing it, and they've done safe clinical studies that show that it's actually safe. We don't need the FDA. I say we fill my swimming pool with this stuff. Yeah, we'll bathe in it. <laughs> I'm ready. Yeah, he's 90 years old now, and he needs a lot of uh, telomerase. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, I, I mentioned that this is going to be available soon. Mm -hmm. I believe there's already animals, dogs, cats, horses, sheep, pig, and deer, all have been shown to age by telomere shortening. Mm -hmm. And I believe that some places, you know, like even those places where they're cloning your pets, right now people can take cells from their deceased pets, send them to labs like in South Korea and stuff like that, and they can take those cells, grow it into a new pet, and send it back to you. Oh. What? It's just a simple procedure. Simple for people like me. Oh, my goodness. My <laughs> counterparts, let's say, in South Korea and stuff like that. Simple for, for, to first put the telomerase gene into those cells and then grow up a pet, and the pet's probably going to be immortal. Oh, now, uh, wow. We don't have any results yet because it's... It's probably only been done maybe in the last year for the first time. And you know, there's a really pet. good joke in all that, but I'm not going to go there. It would be like Pet Cemetery, but without the negative Let's hope effects. Not. Yeah. Wow. Well, people will spend more on their pets' health and, and longevity yes. than they will on their own. And so I believe that this is big business coming up. This, I am so excited about this whole new field and how the entire scientific community is mm -hmm. publishing papers, all supporting how this is all working. And like 20 years ago, there was lots of negative publications and stuff saying this mm -hmm. was a bad idea, but now it's all positive. Everybody's test. The telomeres have been shown to be the cause of every single disease you've ever heard of. Not the only cause, but it, it is connected to every disease you've ever heard of, and length in the telomeres mm -hmm. is predicted and, and shown in mice. It's predicted that it's going to reverse these diseases in humans. You know, I, I have to think that the reason we haven't quite gotten FDA approval yet here is because, you know, when you reach a certain age, you're on Medicare, all those things, and they're trying to let those people die off because they've already paid into the system. Why keep them alive where they can be young, youthful, and turning back that biological clock? Well, we do have this thing called the silver tsunami that's coming right now where the baby boomers are all getting older and a lot of different countries are really worried about mm -hmm. how are we going to take care of all these old people. Mm -hmm. But the solution is to make them young. Yes. And so that's the, that's the approach that Japan and South Korea, Japan's got the worst problem. They, by 2050, they expect 35% of their population to be over 65. Okay. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to find out ways of making young people young. And they're, they're looking very seriously at telomere biology as a way to do that. This just blows Doc, my mind. That, that's crazy. amazing. <laughs> now, uh, 
if they do that, not only they will recap the person and uh, with a tremendous experience will be better service to society, mm -hmm. will have better knowledge of the things that they are doing. And if they are young, the, the, the quality of service will be longer and will be more, more productive for society and for the person. This is, yeah, this is really an incredible, incredible program. And if the mice data, um, research with mice equates to humans, we're actually going to see memories come back. So people that are already too old and they're suffering from dementia or Alzheimer's, uh, I predict that their memories are actually going to come back. Because <coughs> it might be that these diseases are caused by lack of access to the memory, not the actual loss of the memory. Got so it. lengthening telomeres might restore access to the memory. And the, that's what the mice, all the mouse data is suggesting right now. Dr. How, how, excuse me. Go ahead. Uh, uh, you mentioned Alzheimer's. I was kind of wondering if there's any research relating to Alzheimer's or to cancer as to how this may affect the onset of those conditions. Yes, not, there's is... lots, of, lots of research. Lots of scientists all over the world have been publishing. Right now, it looks like lengthening telomeres will uh, reverse Alzheimer's and decrease the incidence of it. Uh, it's also looking like it will re reverse cancer, stop, help your body fight cancer, and also keep your, decrease your chances of getting cancer. That's fascinating. Uh, the, you know, I give talks like this all over the world and stuff, and so if somebody wants to keep track of, you know, go to one of my presentations, you can, I'll be showing data and stuff like that all over that. I, I, I speak to medical conferences, scientific conferences, general audience conferences, and and investor conferences. So, uh, in those in those rats that you that you already had some experimentation, uh, how about the the lifespan? Is uh, you reverse that one for a certain period of time? Is almost uh, equal to the length of the of the lifespan of this rat? But now you return it and can live twice, or is immortal? Yeah. Well, first of all, we didn't do it. Uh, this was done by Dr. Ron DePinnell at the. Uh, Harvard, and he's now the president of, of uh, MD Anderson. Uh, but uh, mice, I'd mentioned that several animals that have been shown to age by telomere shortening. And mice actually don't age by telomere shortening. So what, what Dr. Ron DePinnell had to do first is he had to engineer the mice so they would age by telomere shortening. Mice age by oxidative stress. And so what he did, and, and mice die of old age at about three years old, from oxidative stress. So what he did is he made it so they had short telomeres and their, their telomeres got shorter every time, just like in humans. And he made it so that the mice died of old age at two years old. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then when he then lengthened the telomeres, they got younger again, but they still died of old age. They still died, but not of old age, at three years old from the oxidative stress. Mm -hmm. so, so, it's, it's what, so it's not going to be as pronounced in mice as I expect it to be in humans, because humans do not have the oxidative stress problems that mice do. I mean, humans do have oxidative stress, but it's a lot easier to control in humans than it is in mice. All right, well, I'm sure we could do two, three, four full shows on this topic, because wow. uh, I have a whole list of questions that we never mm -hmm. got to either. And what we didn't know is that Dr. Bill Andrews is actually a 1,000 years old, because oh. he uses his own product. <laughs> Dr. Bill Andrews of Sierra Sciences, author of Curing Aging. Uh, again, appreciate you joining us on American Medicine Today. Well, thank you. We'll be thank in touch. You again. Thanks again. Thanks. All right. Fascinating stuff really here. You stuff. learn every week yep, on it. American Medicine Today. Well, that about wraps things up. Make sure you uh, watch on WeBeam TV. We stream all over the nation and internationally, worldwide, worldwide. worldwide. And then we are national on Bloomberg, both Saturdays and Sunday evenings. Check your local listings. And here in the Tampa Bay area, WFTS, ABC 28, Saturdays at 7. Uh, make sure you tweet at Dr. Benatti or hashtag American Medicine Today. If you have back problems, check out Benatti.com. We'll see you next week. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Benatti created, perfected, and patented the Benatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Benatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Benatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Benatti succeeds where others fail.
This is the first time that I am pain free after 18 years. And it's just wonderful. I love it. Phenomenal results. No pain whatsoever. My pain is virtually gone. Nothing short of a miracle. Those surgeries gave me my life back. Already I feel like a new person. I'm going home new. I can chase my grandbaby now. I can garden. I can cook. And uh, I'm really thrilled. The outcome has been remarkable. I feel 100% better. It's like a miracle. It was phenomenal. It literally did change my life. I was in a wheelchair at that time and uh, I left here walking. Every single pain that I had when I came here is gone. I'm ready to go home and feel great. This place is great. Thank you. Everything that they said they would do, they have done and I'm very, very satisfied and happy with those results. I knew in surgery, in fact I told the surgeon when he relieved the pain off the nerve. The pain is gone. I'm feeling wonderful. I have no pain. I feel better than I felt in four years from the surgery. It was almost immediate relief. Today I am totally pain free which is just amazing. It's fantastic. It definitely works. I mean, I really don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs>